studied advertising and marketing at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. He studied real estate with a well-known rich dad education program and many other things which we shall speak about today. And this includes modeling. Yes, that's right, ladies. We have a male model here on the show with us today. Whoop, whoop. And best of all, he is a fellow Zimbabwean friend of mine. Welcome to Awaken Your Mind Magic Prosper. It's great to have you here with us today. Oh my God, Susan. Thank you so much. You know, when you were saying all of that, I was wondering, who are they talking about? And then it just <laughs> dawned on me that obviously these are things that I've done. I really appreciate uh, you having me on stage here today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I appreciate you being here because, wow, listeners, this man has an incredible story where he has gone from total adversity into absolutely amazing positivity and this is a mindset that he has carried through from what i've researched on him from being a little boy in africa at a school in zimbabwe and i know that at the time it was known that zimbabwe had one of the best educational systems in the entire world it was associated to the british as an educational system and many of the schools were actually affiliated with very well-known posh British schools. So Prosper is not just a whiz, he is a brain bomb of note. So Prosper, tell us a little about your story and how you awakened your mind magic from adversity into positivity. Absolutely. You know what, uh, Susan, while you were talking about education and everything else, I was just thinking about, you know, my whole journey up until now. And you know what I realized just this moment? The journey still goes on. You keep getting awakened. All right. So it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what, where you've been. If you pay attention to what is actually happening to you at that particular moment, it works out. So like you said, I was brought up in Zimbabwe. Um, obviously to a middle-class sort of family at that time. My dad was a cop and my mom was a nurse. So they at least would be able to bring food to the table. But the economy and everything else did not, uh, you know, play to their cards at that time. And I, I think you would remember that's a time when there was that whole discrepancy and the shelving of what Zimbabwe was like. You know, we, we, we call those days from Mazoe to, you know, <laughs> from Mazoe Orange Crush to like water that's not even purified, you know? So um, the economy went down and everything else just didn't um, work well, but there was instilled in us a need and a yearning to learn, to always be better, do better and go ahead, all right? So for me, it all started when I was going into what they call form one. So that's when you're coming in from like primary school and you're going into you know, junior high, to, 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 to say the words of the Western world. And that's when I went to a school that had an expatriate uh, student who um, eventually had come in from Australia and was teaching mathematics at that school that we were there. So everything was new for me. And to be frank, that's the first time I actually seen a white person at really, really close proximity. I mean, there was white people in Zimbabwe would meet them in shops and everything else, but one that would, you know, talk to you and really want to, yeah, uh, converse and, 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 and want to see you progress. So I took, um, you know, inclined to that and I felt like she had stories to tell because she was different, okay? So we listened to what she was saying about Melbourne, about how she grew up, about how she keeps she keeps wanting to travel around the world and for me that was the spark that showed me that you can literally go around the world doing what you absolutely love all right and i i didn't know that was possible you could just maybe travel from mutare to victoria falls or, or harare to chipinga and that was it you know you wouldn't even go to like south africa or namibia or malawi because zimbabwe was the bread basket so we never had a need to leave our place up until the economy changed. So that 
spark started when the teacher started telling me about her stories and it felt really, really interesting that you could be, do and have whatever you want, wherever you can. So for me, that awakened it for, uh, for me. Um, I started learning, studying, getting really close to her. She even introduced us to some pen pals in Australia, which made it very, very genuine that there is life out there because they'll send us toys and, you know, souvenirs and all those knickknacks. Now, can you imagine I'm this African kid with an Australian pen in class and all of those things? So it just really was a whole different um, you know, for me growing up and, and that fascinated me up until I started on my journey to make sure that I ended up here and, and there we are. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, I've watched a video about you and I know you've got it on a lot of your social media and it actually made me cry. Oh. It was so hard for me where you set out to find this person who had been basically your mentor and a person who, like you say, made you realize that you could become this digital person. Well, of course, in those days, it wasn't so digital. But this person who could travel. I mean, I'm a digital nomad. Well, when I'm allowed to fly somewhere. <laughs> at the moment, not. <laughs> Here I am in Brisbane. Not to say that I'm unhappy about that. But speak more about that. Let the listeners hear about that. Absolutely. See, I've vowed to become an idea for every other African kid out there that you too can be, do, and have the life that you need. So I'm just going to backtrack a little bit. When we were growing up, we did not have Instagram. We did not have Facebook or some sort of access to, um, you know, the people that we aspire to. So safe to say we actually did not have role models now she became a role model to me i now wanted to go out there and help other people have a happier existence the same way she had made me and all the other kids in my class do all right so when i got here i started noticing that wait a minute i did not come here alone it's because of where I am now, I'm stepping on the shoulders of giants. I need to go back and look for which giants these are and at least let them know that do not ever stop whatever you're doing because you never know who's going to come knocking on your house's door and say, because of you, I did not forget. So for me, that is very, very important. You know, um, to, to, to have people that come to me later on in life saying, because of you, I did not give up. Right. So I thought I would give her that gift by really showing up because obviously she did promise to say, hey, if ever you are in Melbourne, please come around and have a cuppa. I just wanted her to eat her words. Great stuff. So when I came here to Australia, um, you know, when, things things were not as easy. But when, when I started to gain ground and I started to see that I am rightfully placed, um, that's when I started looking out for her. But when you're looking for people, you raise a lot of eyebrows because, I mean, obviously there's safety around why are you searching so much for such a person. I actually uh, attracted the eyes of the federal police and they invited me nicely to their offices and they asked me why you just came from Zimbabwe and what's the whole point in you, um, you know, going about searching for this woman. And then I told them the story and that I wanted to just say thank you for having helped me realize that, you know, where I was was temporary. So... With that being the case, obviously the federal police has an arm that has the their publicity, you know, just in case cases are being brought in, the public wants to know who's done what, you know, just to keep the public public informed. So they then ushered me into this office. There was this other really nice lady and she started talking to me about publicity and she said, would you want this story Ed, just in case you could be on radio and somebody would know who um, your teacher was and eventually you could get found. 
And I was a bit hesitant because now, you know, the cops have been involved. Now I'm going public about this. And, and coming from Zimbabwe, you don't just go public, you know, in, in, in no public <laughs> You know, you just, you just, yeah. And I was like, nah, nah, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what this trap is. Um, you know, just, just get me out of here, you know. And um, two, three weeks later, I actually got a, a letter, an email from uh, Channel 9 saying, we heard your story and we are starting a new series called This Time Next Year. Would you want to be a part of our contestants in this story? And I was like, I've never heard of this channel before. How much of a trap is this? And I was also thinking, uh, this is somebody else's life. If you guys were worried that I'm invading their privacy, now you want to <laughs> publicize the whole thing. Like, it didn't make sense. It was like an oxymoron. But um, you should have seen me there. I was like a chameleon in a bag of Skittles, you know? <laughs> I didn't know what color to to, to be. So, um, um, I think... I then talked to a few other people and then they said, yeah, no, no, it's this guy, Carl Stefanovi, he's really good uh, at what he does. And then the publicity arm of Channel 9 called me and they're like, yeah, you, you, it's all up to you. We can help you find this place, this lady, and we can support you in every way you can. We can, if there's need for travel, public, um, uh, private agents and all that stuff. Now, there was also that little brain inside of me that was going, hey, this could be good. You know, I didn't know what it would turn out to be, but then I now started thinking, you know, these guys are paying so much attention to this. Uh, this could be good um, because I also know that the universe does not deal you cards that you cannot handle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like whatever you are given, you have the strength inside of you to, to deal with it. So I was just like, you know what? Let's awaken my mind magic. Let me get amongst it. And then we got there. But obviously there was that fear that what if she... She doesn't reciprocate. What if she now there was now that fear of rejection that maybe she says, no, I don't want any of this. And then I would have wasted people's time. And you know what I mean? I didn't want to be that person. So eventually, um, yeah, we we went on Channel 9, did everything they could to make sure that that reunion happened. And the best part about it is the first time I actually met her was that moment you actually see on TV. So you know, and they made sure that that happened. And, and it was, I was sitting in the car when they were setting up the cameras and everything else. And I didn't know what was happening. And they were talking to her. They even had a counselor that had to speak to her because then they wanted to let her know the impact of how this was going to go so that she would agree. And she's like, oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't explain this. Yeah, why not? So you gave her an opportunity as well by your passion to be able to find this wonderful woman. And I have seen, Prosper, that video where you you just break down and cry. And your beautiful little girl sees that. She's sitting on her mummy's lap. And the, the beauty of that was that she was allowed to come and sit on your lap and meet this wonderful woman as well. Because she wouldn't exist, let's face it, in Australia, no. if the, this woman hadn't have influenced you. Absolutely. So, <laughs> you, you actually brought me to that place again. Um, what, what was happening to me then was I was sitting on national TV. Everything that a lot of people aspire for. It was just right there in front of me. I had the crowd. I had the... the interview person I, I even had a tailored suit did you even look at that suit i was wearing man it was you know you know and and, and and it all just became surreal to me that wait a minute how did this happen you know and, and then there's that little imposter going in who are you what, what is actually happening you know and then the thing that brought me back to reality was the sound of my little girl's cry in the crowd. That then made it real because you know what? Instinctively, if I'm sitting here, because I've been working from home for a while, if I hear her cry, no matter what, I'm dashing out. 
to to yeah. to to go see what's happening because just in case mom is in the shower and she's left by herself. I felt helpless because I didn't know because I was all wired up and there was cameras in front of me. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know what was the right thing to do for the very first time in my life. That's incredible. But you did the right thing. I mean, you just looked, but I mean, the guy interviewing you just saw the moment there as well. Oh, you see, you know, you know why I'm really proud of that moment, sorry? It's because he's got people in his ear. He's got psychologists and lawyers in his ear. Right? So they are the ones that are looking at my body language. They're looking at, do, do you have to ask that question? Stand back a little bit, clean that up or whatever, because that's my life. That's his job. So there would have been somebody who would have mentioned and say, hey, bring that. He's, he, you're losing him. Bring, bring that kid to him. You know? Right. And I, I, and I saw that happening and I was like, wait a minute. OK, fine. I'm by myself. He's got his team, you know, and my kid is out there crying. <laughs> I just wanted it to be fine. And there's a big lesson if anybody goes to watch that little scene there, because some people have this whole uh, work life balance where when I'm professional, I'm professional, you know, kids can, you know, might as well just stay out, do whatever they're doing up until I'm done with what I'm doing. Then I had no ego. Then I, it was just me and, and my world and everything that was happening there. And all I just wanted to was to make sure that my, my little girl was, um, was, was well. But I'm gonna remind her one day because she owes me a dry cleaning bill because you know she then messed up my suit and everything. You know, come on, you know who does that? It was national TV, you know. <laughs> oh well, I'm sure that with a father like you and a beautiful mother like she has, when she's grown up, she'll be able to buy you a few suits. And do you really want a suit at the moment during COVID nineteen? <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. I haven't stopped working in in, in um, um, COVID nineteen, and that's you see you see the the beauty of all of this is I've created it in such a way that I can work throughout um, hard times and uh, tough times because now I have an idea that I want to create, so I can be the role model for those that cannot have um, people to aspire to become. So now I've got a duty. I'm working for people that I don't even know. So who am I to stop showcasing that this is possible? And yes, I do need to wear a, a, a tailored suit. I, I dressed up for you today, yeah, you see? I saw that. <laughs> I'm going to have to have you back again when I go start to do uh, lives. So you can see this handsome man in his, his get up. He looks, he looks pretty cool. And I've had some guests that come out and say, okay, Susan, I know that this isn't on camera. It's voice, so they're in their pajamas. Cool. <laughs> as long as you're comfy. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. Sorry about that. Um, I always believe the way you present yourself is the way you are perceived. That's why radio um, people become famous. You know why? Because their personality, their energy, their character comes out via voice. So if you're feeling good and if you're looking amazing, guess what? There's an air of confidence that comes with that. And you know you mean business. If you're going to be wearing pajamas and everything else, your mind is looking at that scene and is thinking, why are we not Netflix scene? So something must be wrong. <laughs> I love that. Oh, you're great. Now, this is something that I enjoy. You have something that you say. You say you believe that there's no meaning of life if you don't have something to live for and you live your truth, what's your message to people? Because you are somebody that I reckon every person, especially a child from certain backgrounds, can aspire to and say, if he can do it, so can I. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm really touched with... Um... Um, you know, that sentiment, because I viscerally believe that 
every single one of us here in this world is here to live, to learn, and to contribute. We're here to live the life that evolves us into who we're actually supposed to become. And we need to learn what we need to do so we can become that person. I mean, obviously it's evident that learning is a really big part of my, um, you know, my, my, my whole being and contribution. Contribution is basically giving off of your talent, giving off of your time, giving off of your expertise, so you can also help other people be doing have a happier existence. So it's, it, it's so important that you fill yourself up to so you can have an overspill for other people. And it's a vicious cycle. So for me, if you can live and learn and you can contribute, you will have a happier existence. Universe understands this. You know, in the quantum field, we are all energy. And the vibrations of positivity come from you and are reflected back at you. And this is what you're giving to the world. And I, and I love your goal. You say your goal in life is to change the world in a way so that no child starves or no dog dies in cold street. <laughs> that is compassion on steroids. Absolutely. You see, when people are, they, there's this whole statement um, that maybe you would have seen in, 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 a, in, a, in a bathroom at school or something. When we were growing up, yeah, there was this sign that says, leave this toilet better than you found it. And when I started reading, that was literally one of the things that I first read. So it stuck with me. So coming from a place where some kids go with that only because somebody did not do their homework or just had a kid and does not care. Or we have, you don't see it in the first world, but if you go in any third world country, there's dogs, there's animals, there's cats that are just stray because they are out there gallivanting for food. But if we all live in a life where we fill ourselves up, then we'll have an overspill to give. And if we can give, you can't... Giving doesn't mean you give money alone. Giving is what we're doing right now. Susan, do you understand what is actually happening right now? We are freezing time. You have given off of your platform. I'm giving off of my time. And this is set in stone. There could be Sally, John, or Ruben who's listening to this in 2057. We did this in 2020. Because we gave of our time. That teacher gave off her time by coming to Australia, no, to, from Australia to Africa. You gave off your time, uh, you know, you were a teacher as well from, from what, what I understand. You gave somebody hope. So if we really live our life to the fullest, we can have other people emulating what we have done because then we're sharing the lessons that we've learned and we're contributing to the great, to the greater mood of, 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 of humanity. I, I totally see that. I mean, the law of reciprocation or the law of giving, as you say, it doesn't have to be money. It's your time. Or, and, and, and when you're doing it genuinely from your heart, this is what universe also understands, is you receive what you give. And that's where people in churches or wherever it is, they believe in tithing. I think that's part of where they feel that they give towards something that they believe in. And this is not only necessary for people who go to a mosque or a, um, you know, a, a church or any of these sort of things. Every human should understand this law. And they wouldn't be sitting there saying, oh, poor me. I don't know why I've got no life. 
because you got no life if you're not prepared to step out and also open yourself up, like you said, to be aware of what's happening because nothing is by coincidence. Everything, doesn't matter who you're talking to, whether you're in a, in a queue waiting for something for coffee, let's say, uh, one and a half meters apart, <laughs> uh, wearing a face mask, the person behind you or be in front of you, you may chat to, and they've just got one tiny little thing that they say that you spark on. And you, if you are aware, you follow up on that. And I think where you say about children, and we had a long conversation about this the other day when we met up on Zoom. We should never tell our children that they can't believe or it's impossible. Absolutely. We were chatting about this and we we're talking about education where people have the old fashioned beliefs that you've got to do it this way. If a child's creative and amazing like your little girl is, let her or him do what they're good at so they can develop into this incredible, unique being. We all have an individual soul, just like we all have an individual fingerprint. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that is absolutely true. Um, I'm just going to touch on the one thing that you mentioned a little bit earlier, that we are all energy. All right. Whatever energy you are giving off of, no matter how socially distancing you are with other people, you're also contributing to the outcome of what's going to happen to everybody else. So my question to everybody is just who are you to stop the future generations from leaving a happier existence just because you're too selfish to contribute. And like you say, there's so much that's happening right now that kids are being uh, brought back home so that we can homeschool them. And just, you know, to put context to what you mentioned, that my little girl does not understand the formal stuff that she has to learn. But she has taken an incline or a liking to, to typing and I'm letting her do that because, well, for my own selfish reasons, at least it keeps her entertained. But I know that's a skill that she's going to carry on for the rest of her life. Absolutely. I mean, this day and age, everybody needs to know how to do that. So why not start young? It's like these, these uh, seven children who at the age of three can play piano concertos and things like that. Absolutely. Why stop somebody doing something that they just have this natural ability to do? And it's, you know, this this is where I like what you say. You say you're weird and that you've taught yourself how to make people smile and make them believe in everything. <laughs> that is so cool, Prosper. You see, when I, when I came to Australia, right i had nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams i'm coming from a place where the whole village raises a, a child so when you come around here where even your neighbor does not talk to you it's a very confusing place to be for an african person you know the first thing you would want to do is talk to the person sitting next to you in the tram just find out how their day is going talk to the person you meet on your way to the office. That doesn't happen around here. And I'm, I am, it's very sad to say that it's never going to happen in a very long time. And kids are never going to know the pain of having your hand crushed by a handshake because social distancing. All right. So the only way you can really Communicate with somebody from a distance is just really show them that the energy in me is the same energy in you. Let's let's celebrate that. And you on, the only communication you can do is with a smile. You know, when I was holding my little girl and and and, and she was, you know, at, at an age where only facial expressions were the communication we had. I was so training myself because I wanted them to know that I appreciate her for choosing me to raise her. Because those people have a brain on their own as well. They made a choice before they came here and that's yet another story. So I wanted her to realize right from the get go that I appreciate, and all we did was just smile at each other. She would be like, yeah, 
I knew you were the one, and I was like, yeah, thank you. So if you can, if you can communicate, if you can communicate at that level, humans are instinctively kids at heart. And if you can, right, exactly, you know, and if you really want to put it in perspective, a lot of people stop actually learning, I think, at age 12. And the rest, they're just working on instinct. So why not bring them back to who they, they actually are? We're walking around as zombies. I wrote about this today, you know, in our corporate world. Where the only distinction between your home life and your professional life is a, sorry to say, but a Zoom background. Yeah, <laughs> there's a whole world going on behind there. But why not, why not bring it all together? I've been working from home for a very long time. All I had to do to crack even into the modeling scene was to smile. Have you ever noticed, you know, models have this chisel look and very scary as if they're constipated. I broke the mold and I have photos of me smiling with a big wide smile out there. And for somebody who's in the public image, I would have been self-conscious about my teeth. You know, I've got a really wide gap and it keeps going. But I've told myself it's because I smile too much. My teeth even smile with me. You know what I mean? So it's things like that, that you can't, you, you, you can't take it away from anybody who's, oh, I don't know, Susan, you feel that? Oh, totally. You were talking earlier on about what I believe is a sacred contract before you're born. And you write that, you sign it. Yeah. And you decide exactly what you're going to do when you go back for that t that chance to live a life in a human meat suit, as I call it. And you get, you know you get to choose. You get to choose everything before you are born. And you are so right that from you know having been in education for nearly forty years, I know for a fact that a child, even in a mother's womb knows and hears and feels and it's, it's paramount that you start to treat that soul with absolute love coming from africa myself and living on a farm where we had a thousand two hundred people that were our employees i got to really know and understand the people and i mean even when i was a little girl i was brought up and my first friends were african people you know, I spoke, I spoke the lingo before I knew how to speak English. So, <laughs> what I do know is there's this beautiful love in the Africans where they understand the soul journey. And they also understand how important it is as a community to love one child and all the children because they all belong to you. So that child was born into that community, not only for the parents, birth parents, but for every one of those people in that tribe. They're all teachers for that child. And that is what really, you inspire me because you bring on this thought. And in this time of COVID-19, there are so many people who should listen to this philosophy. The philosophy of an African tribe. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why it was so confusing for me when I came around here. I felt I felt really, really lost. You know, you'd go in and, oh, wait a minute. Who am I? Is there something wrong with me? I even started questioning my own existence. Up until I started um, doing stuff like um, signing up, like you said, you also want to do some modeling. Um, you know, there's a there's a there's a website called starnow.com.au, all right, um, where photographers who are starting out reach out to you know models who want to build a portfolio, and you do it, you know, um, contra, as in you know you you scratch my back, I scratch your back, and there's a lot of that going on. All right. That's how I started sort of meeting people up until I realized, wait a minute, there's a whole bottom feeder level of people that are not really getting the really good jobs right at the top. You know, just like in any, you know, in any industry, it's always 
um, for lack of a better term, it's always a pyramid. The bottom is filled up with players. And right at the top, there's two or three people that are actually enjoying the whole, um, um, you know, the whole field. But you got to be invited up. You, there's, there's no way they will show you the button to the elevator. So I was looking around for that button everywhere I was going. And you never know who's holding that button. That's the one thing that I have I've gotten to know. You never know who, who knows somebody that knows something about somebody. And once you figure out that everybody is, 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 is um, you know, equal, equal ground. Everybody's a level playing field because you never know who they know. And if you're going to be grumpy at the, at the one person, there's a lot of movies, right? Where somebody is so angry, they walk into an interview and then they probably hit somebody on the subway or hit them with a bike and only to find the person turning around in, the, in, in, in that you know, scenario is the person you yelled at on the subway. So when things like that are happening in a fictitious world, how many, in, I mean, how many sort of coincidences are we turning away just because we woke up on the wrong side of bed? You're right there. And again, this is the law of attraction. It's, it's, it's energy. You put out the bad energy, you get back the bad energy. As, as you know, the Buddhists and people like that say, bad chi. You, you breathe out the good stuff or you, you know, it all works for you. Doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. We are, like you said, we are all balls of energy. All right? Like, the, just you being here right now, how many coincidences had to happen for this interview to, 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 to take place? For some weird reason, COVID happened. And then you got stuck here in Australia. And then, and then, and then, and yesterday I saw you on some Zoom video. Like, how... I couldn't get over that. I saw you and I thought, here we go. <laughs> see this guy a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> How small is this world? And if you start looking at all these little coincidences, you now start realizing, wait a minute. Maybe the reason why you had been in Zimbabwe at that time was so that you could say that first letter that you say to me as in Mahadini. You know, you say it in my language and I'm like, wait a minute, who's this lady? <laughs> She's speaking my language and noise. well obviously yeah. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that was that was that was it. That whole time your whole point or mission in life was so you could say those words. And now who's to know what this show is gonna create for somebody or what spark it's gonna create? Absolutely. You, you know what I mean? So, so in I love it. <laughs> and this is why I love awaken your mind magic as well, because I adore the fact that I have such inspirational people who really have made it big time in life and they have done it on their own, they've opened themselves up and they said, hell no, I am going in this direction. So you living from the dream you had as a little boy and living the blueprint you created where you thought, I'm going to do what that baby does. And off you went, and you did. And this is not just this, listeners, you've got to know this man. I mean, we talked about his modeling, and he was a talent scout for um, the Australian Academy of Modeling. So, know that not only did he just be a model with his big smile, and he has got his, he, he's got a big gap in his teeth, which is a sign of generosity, by the way. Do you know that, Prosper? So, but he, he, he ended up being a talent scout for the Australian Academy of Modelling. Now, before then, he has worked damn hard at his education. This man has been incredible with what he's learnt. Tell us more about your education. Because you've been very quiet and humble about it. <laughs> you see, there's, there's learning and then there's education. Education, you go in and you do the hours and you swap those hours for a certificate. I used to laugh at myself saying, 
uh, all that I've learned in the four years, I'm only going to have to experience or expand it in the 40 minutes that an exam brings about. All right. So having been brought up with uh, middle class um, parents, they obviously expected the best in me. I absolutely love my dad for that. I, my mom passed, by the way. So um, I also feel like all that I'm doing is show showing her what I could have been, what she would have wanted me to see. But the fact that she's not there to say, hey, son, this is enough. I think I'm just going to keep working until I hear those words, you know. Um, but for me, it's, it's, it's been like that. So formal education got me, uh, it opened up doors for me. All right. It, it, it made me seen and, and obviously be able to talk to people and I have the credentials. But when I went on a journey of self, I can't get it. I can't get it. These little girls crying in the background there. So, and he's sort of like, oh, not talking anymore. My baby's crying. I think she's your soul sister. She came to join you <laughs> from the other side. Right. So, um, what I was saying is, so, so when I went on a journey to start really, really at learning, all right, I realized that the learning never ends. With formal education, you've got a due date. You, you, you learn and you ask, is this going to be in the test? And if it's not, it's not worth your time knowing about it. But right now, I believe there's seven or eight facets in our life. Your health, your, your, your wealth, your fitness, uh, your relationships, your communication. Um, everything about that. There has been a book written to explain how to do it well and above average. Now that fascinates me. Because if somebody has taken the time to learn a particular part of life and, and put 250 pages on there, that means that thing is important. So I would never talk about my education because I'm not done yet. Okay, so you're not going to talk about your education, but tell us about your live long company. Absolutely. Tell more about that. I think the customers, uh, your customers, your future customers, my listeners are going to want to become your customers. <laughs> Tell uh, us more. Absolutely. So um, I created a company or a business that helps small to medium businesses reach their customers using the energy of the world. And it's usually organic, um, rich. So there are ways that you can, you know, uh, market your business. You could just pay somebody some money and go in and interrupt people that don't care about your existence and you're just causing noise, which is what all the advertising is out there in the world. I believe if you've got a message that is directed to a particular market, the universe is your media to share that message. And this is what I do and help people. And I've created tools and, and strategies for people to actually really reach their customers. And usually customers that you get in this energetic way, they pay, they stay, and they refer. Which is why nearly all of my clients have businesses that are profitable and they actually enjoy working in their business. How many people have you helped in this way? See, every single day I, I, I get either a review or somebody that's just says, hey, thank you or whatnot. Clients that have actually paid us to date without sounding obnoxious or whatnot. We've helped over 450 plus businesses. That's fantastic. That's who we can count. Right. But. Three days ago, it was my birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you very Happy much. Happy and birthday. and um, it's days like that that um, I 
try and see, because some people wait until their death to see if they were actually loved. But it's days like that that I really see that there's genuine appreciation of the work that I'm doing there. Since three years ago, what I started doing was I would ask people on my newsfeed and say, hey, it's a Friday today. Um, if you met me out, would you buy me a drink? And everybody would say, yeah, I'll, I'll buy a drink, I'll buy a drink, I'll buy a drink. Yeah, I'll buy you a drink, I'll buy you a drink. And then I figured, wait a minute, let me cultivate this energy. And I and then I would send that person back a message and I say, I've got a wish list on Amazon. And it's all the books that I want to read. And a drink would probably cost $12. This book will probably cost $9. Are you able to substitute that drink for a book? And ever since that has been a tradition for the last three years. Right now, the books are coming in. I do it on the 1st of August. And my birthday is on the 24th to allow shipping and everything else. Right now, the books are starting to come in. So, some came in, one came in yesterday, and it's people that I have never spoken to, but they feel the need to reciprocate what I have done for them by buying me a book. Just so, because we, like you said, reciprocation, the more you give, the more you get back. I'm not saying go out there and start asking for books or whatever, because you got to earn it. But what I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is, I, I measure... The amount of people that want to reciprocate because you never know what I have done every single day. I'm putting out content. I'm putting out energy. I'm really um, being the role model that I want to become. And you never know who you're impacting along the way. So that's usually a test. I can't count the thousands of people that cannot yet afford our services that I've actually helped as well. For me, those are the most important people. Because one day they're going to show up and say, hey, I've been watching you for the last four years. I can't do anything right now, but this is the least I can do for you. That to me is fair. Yeah. Oh, well done. Now, you also followed your dream of going and living in different countries. How many different countries have you lived in so far? <laughs> Great start. That's a really good question. So before... All this, I, I was, I was a nerd, you know, <laughs> and um, I couldn't have my my parents, even though we were okay, they couldn't afford to buy me the Nintendo game console, so I would only see it from other kids that their parents were rich and everything else, and I made it a uh, point that if I can't. Uh, and I'll tell you the story of what I'm doing now. If I can't get the console, I want to go and work there. Right? And I, I started researching where the headquarters for Nintendo was. And I found that it was in a shuffle mall. And I literally worked for two years straight, saved enough and got my Schengen visa. And I went and stayed in Germany for nine months. Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch, aber mein Deutsch ist nicht sehr gut. Ich habe, ich habe neun Monate gestanden in Aschaffenburg und ich weiß es nicht, um, ich kann nicht gelehrt. Und, um, because, sorry, I just spoke a bit of German, because I had to learn a lot of German. Ich kann alles verstanden. Ah, du auch? <laughs> Warum, warum <laughs> think us, yeah? you know, I think we need to translate that to the people. <laughs> so I could hear you were saying. Okay, so I said I went and I lived in Germany for nine months. And I had to learn. I was happy, but I had to learn the language. So it, it felt like I was starting all over again. Yeah. Um, plus, I was not in the right frame of mind. So I lived in Germany. And then from there, I moved back to Zimbabwe. And things were not really working out in Zimbabwe. I uh, went and lived in Malawi, which is pretty much, you know, what can you say, um, another country in Africa there. In, oh, I didn't talk about my days in university in South Africa because my parents, you know, <laughs> were paying for that. So, you know, it's the perks of being um, a, a son. Um, but then after that, um, I, I came to Malawi where I was the operations manager for the second biggest telecommunications company there. All right. So that 
now was my corporate experience of yay you know i'm in another country i'm serving um a lot of people and i i i i viscerally believe what zig ziglar says help enough people get what they want you too will get what you want all right so i help people get connected and and we sort of introduced internet um there was what was called ymax technology and that's how i then ended up in australia anyway because i had to come and learn all of that um technology you know here coming in from singapore so 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 yeah i i yeah i've been I, i've now become a child of the universe if you look at my household um i've got two australian kids i'm zimbabwean my wife is of uh, italian descent so it's it's like an omelet you know the world has just become this one big global village and if you're not welcome anywhere you're going you must be doing something wrong well i reckon you are and your family would have every door open to you and you would be very welcome into each and every home you were in the states for a period weren't you absolutely <laughs> well we watched a lot of tv all right So TV influenced me all the rappers and I wanted to be in Chicago you know Oprah Winfrey was talking about the Windy City and she was giving people cars you know so I just felt <laughs> you went there to get a car I went there to get a car <laughs> you know Oprah is like you got a car you got a car and so so a lot of my influence has been um outside influence and um um I've, I've just been lucky that I've had parents that have Uh, created a safe space for me where wherever I went I could always go back but this is the longest I've stayed in one place 9 years now so this is home now so yeah the <laughs> and I'm grounded Being now that way, I love Australia and the Australians I'm a wanna be Aussie they're great people <laughs> and you are helping so many of them as well and there's something that I picked up there when you were speaking about parents when you have supportive parents who believe in you and allow you to be the person you're meant to be like your parents have that's why you 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 got these giant wings and you can soar and you're doing it and you're flying solo okay you got the family there but you are doing this because you believe in yourself and i so wish people would understand this the love and self love starts within yourself first i know you believe this because you've got some of these quotes that i've picked up that you say <laughs> never allow someone to be your priority while you're just their option oh absolutely you like that one oh absolutely you see when you're on your way up you usually think that everybody else was where you were where you want to be um you got to give them your all and people take advantage because if they can see that you're willing to do anything you know they they would take advantage and half of the time they don't even bet an eye lead to see if you're doing okay um and and a lot of people only realize that a little bit later on in life it happens in relationships it happens in business partnerships it happens in in um you know in 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 work where um the client takes 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 and gives nothing back um they want your undivided attention but when it comes to paying the invoice they're need peeking um you know and they don't value the work that you're putting out there so it's just if you really fill yourself up you would have an overspill and you would have lots to give we all fly and we go places whenever you see those beautiful ladies you know showing you the exits and everything else it's not a dance they're giving you the best life lesson right there what do they say when in case of emergency put your mask on first and i i i obviously right now after this i'm going to be so rich i'm probably going to be fly, flying private but i only fly economy you know just so that i hear that message again and again and again put your mask on first because you are useless if you can't breathe i hear you i i used to be a three strike officer on cruise liners and um we each were well they they would give us a bit of a sort of um 
evaluation and the test to see if we were mentally capable. And then you'd be assigned to be with, if, if you were good enough, they felt, to be a person in charge of a lifeboat. Wow. And I had that honor of being a person in charge of a lifeboat, uh, where I would be the person there to take people onto a lifeboat and be in charge of whatever happened. And it was exactly the same thing. It was a great lesson to me, is I had to make sure I had my life jacket on first before I tried to help anybody else. Absolutely. And it's the same analogy uh, where, you, where you speak about the, the face mask. And that's the same even with face masks in COVID-19. Put that on first so you don't sneeze on somebody else's, you know, hello. Talking about COVID-19, what do you wish for the future in this world post-COVID-19? You see, COVID-19 for me is a, is a little bump on the way to big things. I viscerally believe that most of us live a life unplanned, go on a journey without setting the destination on the GPS, all right? Whenever you're going somewhere, right, your, the address that you put is not the address of where you are. You put the address of where you're going and then that GPS self navigates to where you are in the event that you come across a speed hump or a detour, right? That's not the end of your journey. So a lot of us haven't put the GPS of what it looks like when, it, when we have arrived. For me, this is basically yet another episode for us to actually realign with who we absolutely are. We've been brought back to factory settings and now we have to really face the people we've been trying to avoid all this time, which is our family, ourselves. And pretty much after this, yes, it might change a few things. It's been a long time coming. There's been instances like this in the past where after this, the industrial revolution came about or the agricultural revolution came about. Now we're in the information age. All we've known about industry, all we've known about um, you know, how the world functions right now is now an index or a Google search away. What we now need is people that can make sense of that information. If you know how to do X, Y, and Z, package that into a little nice something and pass it on to the next person so that they too can make sense of the world around them. So this is where we're being ushered into. And, and I can't wait for, for the next events to come around. I agree with you there. This is not a time of destruction. And I tell my clients this. This is a time of construction. And I created the three-day program that I work with my clients now. You know, in a coaching world, you go on and on and on, and on coaching. People don't have time for that now. So it's, it, my program is it's called, it's called Blueprint, Blueprint Mind Map. And, and you know, Prosper, what it does is within three to four hours, they've created their mind map and they've done exactly what you're saying to everybody. Because it's great advice. Get your act together, put it into a blueprint, and live it very quickly because the greatest millionaires were created in the Great Depression. And this is another one and you can do it so well because we've got this technology. I mean, you're a, you're a digital boss. You can help people with their websites with all sorts of things. And it just makes sense. So what you've said to everybody is so clear to me. And I trust that by the time they listen to this, they come to you and they say, Hey, Prosper, I need your assistance, please, and I will send you a big book. <laughs> <laughs> Do that, you. Absolutely. How can, how, can, how can the listeners get hold of you? Do you? Is there a quick thing that you can tell me? Obviously, I'm going to put 
not everything that you have, and there's a long list, everyone, on uh, when, when we upload this interview, so that you can find him, because he's amazing. But can you let people know very briefly how they can call you or how they can get hold of you? Absolutely. I'm just going to say something there, Susan. Remember when we started, you say, please switch off your phone or... Uh, any notifications and I told you there's 157 ways I calculated how people can get a hold of me. So since I visually work within the SEO sector, just typing in my name is enough. Prosper Taravinga. All right. If you Google my name, Prosper Taravinga, you will be led to at least one of my uh, properties online that would then show you where you really want to go. So it's just my name or oh, live long and prosper. And that basically would uh, lead you towards, um, you know, um, whatever it is you're seeking. Well, Prosper, your parents, they named you well. They knew that you were going to do it. They even gave you a name to live with. And that's another African tradition I love. <laughs> is they give their children these lovely names and they live by those names. So... Thank you to your parents for that and to your now departed mum who in African tradition of course is around you all the time. Thank you so much Prosper for being on, on this wonderful interview today. You've been an absolute gem. Oh, absolutely. You know what, Susan? It takes two to tangle. If you he did... off his sound. I don't know why he's not talking it... to anybody. <laughs> absolutely. It takes two to tango. All right? It takes two to tango. I'm going to tango, tango with you next time I see you. Absolutely. If you didn't give me the energy or if you didn't create this platform, then none of this would have happened. So I absolutely thank you for making this space, not just for yourself, but the people that are going to be uh, enjoying all the talks that you're bringing to them. So uh, on behalf of everybody else, I thank you. Thank you so much, Prosper. And to everybody out there, you got to go and find this man. He is the prosperous gem of the century. <laughs> find out, Prosper. Perfect. Are we done? Perfect. Yes, we're done. Oh, how did we go?